Hey guys, Takamasak here, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda! Last time we left off right outside of... Uh, Ganon's room, but unfortunately we can't kill him yet. If you remember the first quest, we had to get another item before we could even finish him off, so... Yeah, if you remember, it's the... oh god... Silver Arrows, so we're gonna have to go hunt those down. Uh, plus I don't have the map yet. Ooh. So let's go hunt... get out of the door. Hunt those two items down. Uh, thankfully, they're not too far from each other. However, the game does make you take kind of a roundabout way to get back to Ganon. Unfortunately, there's only that one method of getting back to him, so... Hey! Oh! Yeah, this is just what a patron needs. Uh, more projectiles. Ow. The old reflexes ain't what they used to be. Why did I say that like a pirate? I don't know. Alright, we're killed. Oh! For killing him, we get the map, which is apparently Ganon's head, if I had to guess. Pretty gnarly looking. At least level 9 always has a pretty cool level layout. And we do need to kill these chumps also. Hey, hey. Ow. Oh well. What can you do about it? As you might have expected, his eyes hold a secret. The right eye has the silver arrows here, and ugh, the left eye was the... What was that over there? The compass, I believe? Yeah. Now we need to kind of backtrack to the start of the dungeon. We could have come straight over here and just grabbed this stuff first, because it's not really that far. But I just prefer to get the red ring first. Plus, I well, I guess it would save a little backtracking, but uh, this room is just straight across, so I won't bother lighting it up there. Yeah, I feel it's just safer to grab the red ring first, and whatever. And this should put us right back at the stars. Alright, now we just pretty much need to repeat what we did the first time to get the red ring. Thankfully, a lot of these rooms should be void of monsters, but I think uh, Keys and Vyres will have respawned, unfortunately. I suppose if you'd like to murder them again, I suppose it wouldn't be a bad idea at half, half health here. Try to farm another heart. No. Oh well. If I get it, I get it. If I don't, well, that's what I have red potions for. I... No, I don't remember the layout of this room, so... Oh. Simple enough. Alright, once again, just head immediately back right. Just hold right with this room so the uh, red bubbles don't spawn in there. You do just fine. I think I did leave a few whiz robes on the way. Oh well. We can take care of those guys. Magical shield, magical sword... Oh! Magical sword and the, uh... Red ring there makes them relatively easy. But I don't want to deal with them if I don't have to. Oh, alright. Fairy? Fairy? Now, it's not the first quest where I'm going to get about 12 on the main walk to Ganon. Luck at its finest right there. Unfortunately, no such luck. Uh, this quest. Pay attention. Uh, no, not worth it. I'll leave him be. Alright. Push this once again. And even more keys! Just what the game needs. More and more keys. All right, after all that, we should be in the clear now. All right, doors open. So let's bust on in. To the final showdown with Ganon, the Prince Darkness. Now, he didn't actually change. So if you remember from the first quest, uh, I'll repeat it just in case you 
didn't watch uh, that episode. Uh, what he does is he teleports around you, either clockwise or uh, counterclockwise, depending on where he is uh, on his spawn. And it's if you just hold still, you'll really be able to easily tell uh, where he's going to be. So, oh, should pay attention here. There we go. And he'll spawn in a random location, and just the only thing that might change is which way he is, uh... Oh! Oh! Uh, which way he's circling around you. You know, he's kind of reverse there. I hit him three times, get your silver arrows ready. Nope. Alright. Nope! Shoot him in the balls for good measure. Yeah, once again, pretty easy, although he did take five hearts, I suppose. Was the Triforce just glowing orange there? Uh, no, I don't know. I'll destroy the fire this time. Hooray! Once again, we've saved Princess Zelda, whose right eye is bigger than her left eye. I have never noticed that before. That is creepy. Hey, thanks. It's still bigger. That is scary. Well, so is Link's, now that I look at his. What kind of creepy, demonic, zombie crap is going on here? And I think we've already seen the credits, but let's let them roll again. Hooray! And that concludes the credits. Not a lot going on. You'd think there'd be more people involved with the making of a game of this link, but... Haha, <laughs> get it? The game of this link? <laughs> no, it's it's not even spelled the same, so... Alright, let's just talk about the game a little bit. So I'll start at the music. Uh, the music is very nostalgic to me. I mean, 1986, I was like four when this game was made, so... I did play it sometime in the 80s, but the music has just been in my head. Mostly the... Uh, title music and the overworld music. It's very recognizable music, even to people who aren't exactly hardcore gamers or maybe even played the game before. I believe my wife actually picked out the game music from the other side of the room. She came in, are you playing Zelda? And I'm like, absolutely! So that's kind of interesting to see that the music is that memorable to uh, people that even don't play games that much. So, um, the only minor gripe I have about the music is the dungeon music was a little repetitive, but once again, 1986, so I'm not really concerned about that. Uh, some of the music has actually persisted through some of these Zelda games, uh, the future ones, uh, such as remixes of the main theme and a little bit of the uh, overworld theme. Plus, the Secrets melody is something that I don't believe has gone away. I haven't played anything newer than, like, oh, what was it called? Like, the Minish Cap is honestly maybe the newest thing I've played. I've played the Nintendo 64 ones, but unfortunately haven't done the Wii ones yet. Uh, the sounds, I don't have much to say about that. Everything fits wonderfully. Sounds, uh, monsters dying, you know, sounds like a monster dying in 8-bit, so... Sword swipes sound like sword swipes, and fire sounds like fire, so I really don't have any complaints about that. Uh, the only annoying thing about the sounds was the beach, and how the uh, how the sound there played after every tiny little uh, noise that was made, especially if you threw the boomerang and it just completely bugged out, but once again, it's just a minor gripe, something that could have made the game a little eensy bit better is just if they would have made that like every five seconds instead of after the sound. But honestly, I'm stretching for things to complain about in Zelda here. Uh, as far as the gameplay went, uh, once again, it's hard for me to find things to complain about. I mean, the controls were well done. Uh, they were simple and responsive. You only have two buttons. Uh, you have plenty of time to get used to mashing A before you even need to learn how to push B and throw your boomerang there. Uh, all the items were useful in their own situations. The candle not too useful for uh, 
stop fighting, but of course you need it to uncover levels, uh, uncover heart containers, rupees, all that kind of stuff. So it's also pretty good for uh, minor mob control. Most of the other weapons were uh, good for mob control, like bombs, uh, especially for the dig dogger there. That it's not that really. Uh, let's see. I don't know what the wording for that, but it's fairly common strategy to do that. Um, yeah, group control and bombs were also useful for secrets, which was pretty helpful. Um, yeah, I liked, I just liked that they had everything that had its own use. I mean, even if you didn't have the sword, but you did have the wand, they let the wand kind of double as another white sword. So that was really helpful and pretty cool, in my opinion. Uh, the least useful item... That's kind of a toss-up between the book and... I might get hatred for saying this, but the bow. As you can see, I really didn't use the bow, other than to maybe get rid of a couple pulls voice, and uh, obviously kill the gomas, and you obviously need it to beat the game, but other than that, I didn't really use it a whole lot, uh, mostly just for the rupee cost. I don't know how they could have handled that better, other than just giving you infinite arrow uses without a rupee cost, but, but it is what it is, so I'm not griping about it. I'm just picking a least useful. Uh, even the food, in my opinion, was a little better, even though it's mostly for weaker enemies, like Octoroks and uh, Gariahs and stuff. At least you could get them all in a group and just use a bomb or just murder them straight out. Uh, yeah, Boomerang and Shield were also self-explanatory. Uh, one thing... I'm not sure how to say it, but the the second quest is absurdly difficult for new players. Uh, just me being an experienced player, uh, handling it, or just knowing the order to buy things, when to buy them, uh, when to get the loots. Uh, as you can see, I only made it out with 10 rupees uh, before entering level 9 there to complete the game. I, the only thing I might think about that is if you're trying to do the levels in succession, is that you're going to die so many times that you've probably collected up enough rupees anyway. I'm pretty sure that's the way it happened to me, so thankfully, uh, the first times I played it anyway, the so thankfully it doesn't take any rupees away when you die or something horrible like that. Yeah, it's not very money-friendly. They could have did a little better job of that. I do like how they reworked all the dungeons, though. Not necessarily any new monsters. That wasn't really... Oh, well, they had the magical rope and the sword-throwing Stealthos. Uh, they could have updated some of the other ones, maybe. I, I don't know how. It's just a thought, in my opinion. But it seems like they could have done something with the overworld a little more. Uh, put more difficult monsters a little bit earlier or something. I don't know. It seems like they revamped the whole underworld, but really didn't do a whole lot with the overworld. We did see a few differences between the quests, but once again, that's really all minor gripes and just things that would have been interesting, at least, to uh, see changed from the first quest to the second quest. But other than that, once again, my gripes are very, very minor about the game. Uh, it's just a great game to pick up, very easy to learn, a little difficult to master with getting used to frickin' whiz robes and uh, dark nuts there, but and once you get the hang of it, it's a pretty fun game, uh, still pretty challenging after all these times of playing it, at least the second quest. I mean, after you play something 800,000 times, it'll get slightly easier, but well, once again, it's just one of those games you can burn through in a week or a couple days easily if you'd like so uh, yeah if you haven't played this where have you been honestly grab a controller play this thing right now it is where the birth of a lot of amazing uh, zelda games came from uh, a lot of game boy games and just everything so yeah that's my pretty much final thing i wanted to say about the first legend of zelda here so, I hope you guys had fun playing along with me, as much fun as I had playing it, and thank you once again for watching another LP. This is Takamasak, and I will see you later.